Where is it? Come on. Oh. No. Lost another one? This isn't my sock, folks. This is my library card. Couldn't find it. I hate this. In today's video, we're going to read about the lost library card. We'll crack the code on this seemingly simple story and unearth a treasure trove of reading comprehension tips hidden within its pages. We're talking sneaky grammar tricks, detective worthy observation skills, and the ultimate strategy to conquer lost library card anxiety. Let's unlock the library secrets together. The Lost Library Card A Case of Canine Confusion Max was devastated. He searched his backpack, his pockets, even under the couch cushions, but his library card was nowhere to be found. Without it, he couldn't check out the latest graphic novel by his favorite author, Captain Comet. Just then, his goofy golden retriever, Sparky, bounded into the room, tail wagging furiously. In his mouth, Sparky proudly held a familiar-looking blue rectangle. It was Max's library card. Relief washed over Max, but then he noticed something strange. The corners of the card were chewed and damp. Max gently retrieved the card from Sparky's slobbery grasp. Thanks, buddy, he sighed. But next time, maybe try finding my missing sock instead. Suddenly, an idea sparked in Max's mind. Maybe Sparky could help him find other lost objects. He grabbed a few treats and hid his favorite stuffed animal, Mr. Fluffles, under the rug. Sparky, find Fluffles. Max commanded, holding up a treat. Sparky's ears perked up, and he sniffed the air excitedly. He trotted around the room, sniffing every corner. Finally, he reached the rug, barked triumphantly, and began digging. Max pulled back the rug to reveal Mr. Fluffles, slightly dusty but unharmed. He rewarded Sparky with a treat and praised him for his excellent detective work. Maybe Sparky wasn't just a goofy dog. Maybe he had a hidden talent for finding lost things. And that ends our story. We're going to check for understanding. Now let's proceed to reading comprehension questions. Are you ready? Let's start. Question number one. What was Max looking for at the beginning of the story? A. His lost homework. B. His missing library card. C. His favorite video game. The answer is B, his missing library card. Question number two. Who found Max's library card? A, his mom. B, his friend. C, his dog, Sparky. The answer is C, his dog, Sparky. Question three, what did Max decide? Question number three, what did Max decide to do after Sparky found his library card? A, train Sparky to find other lost objects. B, take Sparky for a walk. C, punish Sparky for chewing the card.
Letter A, train Sparky to find other lost objects. Next question, how did Sparky find Mr. Fluffles? A, he saw it under the rug. B, he followed Max's instructions. C, he used his sense of smell to locate it. The correct answer is C. He used his sense of smell to locate it. All right, comprehension crew, crush this reading challenge, but still feel like your English needs a little extra kick. We get it. Sometimes this whole English thing can feel like a boss level you just can't beat. That's where the English crew comes in. We're a team of awesome teachers who are obsessed with helping you level up your English game. One-on-one -on -one coaching, we got you. Group classes to keep things fun, you bet. We've got something for everyone, from kids just starting out to young professionals who want to crush it at work. Feeling the pressure of a big test like TOEIC, TOEFL, or IELTS? We have test prep experts who can help you ace those exams like a total rock star. So if you're ready to take your English to the next level, head over to our website and let's chat. Now let's check the grammar points of this story. If you notice, it utilizes context clues and figurative language to describe emotions and situations. The words like devastated, so this strong adjective clarifies Max's intense disappointment about missing his library card and then tail wagging furiously this descriptive phrase shows sparky's joyful and energetic behavior and relief washed over max this figurative language emphasizes the sudden change in max's feeling from worry to relaxation so imagine you're you're a detective you you see words as clues so sometimes words in a story can uh, act like a clue to help you understand how a character feels for example when the story says max was devastated it's like a detective finding a, a footprint it tells us max is super bummed about losing his library card then painting a picture with words just like you can describe your favorite outfit with words like bright, cool, comfy. The story uses phrase to paint a picture of what's happening. Uh, think of tail wagging furiously as a fancy way of saying Sparky's tail was swagging really fast, showing how excited he was. Then feeling like waves, the story says relief washed over Max. This isn't literal water, of course. It's more like saying Max felt a wave of relief, just like a big wave crashing over him, to show how happy he was to find his card. So it's cool, right? This is called a metaphor because it compares a feeling to something else. Then number two is past tense verbs and sequence of events. Was devastated describes Max's initial state. It highlights his actions while looking for the card. Bounded into the room describes Sparky's sudden arrival. Held a familiar looking blue rectangle. Details Sparky's possession of the card. Spark in Max's mind describes a new idea. So let's talk about this. It's like a time travel verbs as they say it. Uh, stories are like time machines taking us on adventures through different moments. Verbs are like the special buttons that control this time travel. Keeping it simple, most past tense verbs in this story are easy to spot. They usually end in ed, like searched and bounded. By using past tense verbs, the author makes the story flow smoothly and allows you to follow Max's adventure from losing his card to finding it and then using it to find Mr. Fluffles. So next time you read a story, try to find the past tense verbs, 
See if you can rewind the story in your head based on what these verbs tell you. So the more you practice, the easier it becomes to understand how past tense verbs help us travel through time and story. All right, and that's a wrap on the lost library card. Remember, strong verbs and context clues are your secret weapons for unlocking the mysteries hidden within story. And if you ever feel like your reading skills need a little extra training, don't forget about the English crew. Head over to our website, www.thenglishcrew.com contact, and let's chat about how we can help you become a reading champion. Speaking of champions, next week, we're tackling a whole new challenge. So smash the subscribe button and get ready to put your reading skills to the test again. See you in the next one. Bye.